Okay, hi folks. Welcome to the second lesson on discrete random variables. And we're introducing a new concept uh, to do with discrete random variables, which is the expected value. And it has this definition. It's the theoretical value, which you would expect to get for the mean if you were to carry out repeated experiments. So this is not a mean of data that's derived from an experiment. This is, if you know the probabilities for a discrete random variable, what mean would you expect to get if you did do a lot of experiments? Now the point of this first example is to illustrate where we get the formula for the expected value from. Okay, so we've got a survey of 100 houses and how many TV sets they had in each, and we want to find the probability distribution. So if you were then to pick a house at random, what's the probability that it would have a certain number of TV sets? Okay, so uh, you'd expect to have 10 out of 100 houses having um, no TV sets from the data. Uh, looking at houses with one TV set, you'd expect the probability to be 75 out of 100. That's the most likely outcome, and so on. So you can see how we get those probabilities by dividing the frequency by the total frequency. Now, separately, let's work out the mean of the data. So ignoring the probabilities that we've just worked out, we'll work out the mean. And this is the formula that you know and love. It means, which means multiply each value by its frequency and divide by the total frequency. So we have 10 times 0, 75 times 1, 10 times 2, and 5 times 3. And of course we divide by the total frequency, which is 100. Now what we're going to do to illustrate what expected value is, I'm going to rewrite this. Uh, you wouldn't really do this in exam, there's no purpose to it except to illustrate this point. We write this as separate fractions. Okay, they're all over the same denominator. I'm just splitting the four terms in the top uh, part of the fraction into four separate fractions. And what I want you to do is to look at the probability table, and to look at this line here, and spot what's going on. Okay, each term, and there are four of them, is a probability value multiplied by the value of x that it corresponds with. So if you take each x value multiplied by its probability, that will give you the mean. Okay, which in this case works out as 1.1 TV sets as the mean. Um, however, this is, if we look at it as a probability thing, that's how we would work out what we would expect to get. Um, so based on the probabilities, we can come up with an expected value for a variable, which means the expected value of the mean. And we can see from what we've just done that we can get that by multiplying each value by its probability, which gives us this formula. Now let's try this out in an example. Here we have a discrete random variable x and we've got its probability distribution, uh, but two bits are missing, p and q. And we are asked to write down two equations involving p and q. Um, so that means we need two bits of information, two facts to use. So the first fact that I'm going to use is this one that we've been given, that the expected value is three. So if I use the formula that we've just looked at, it means I have to multiply each value by its probability. So 1 times 0 0.1, 2 times p, 3 times 0 0.3, 4 times q, 5 times 0 0.2. That's the expected value, so I can write equals 3. And if I tidy that equation up a little bit, we get the following simplified version, 2p plus 4q equals 1. And I'll label that equation 1, we'll come back to it later. The second fact that I've got that I can use is one that I can always use, that the probabilities add up to 1. So I simply add up the five values for my probabilities, and I can write equals 1. And then I can tidy that equation up as well. So I'll end up with p plus q equals 0.4, and I'll call that equation 2. So uh, let's have a look at part b then. We want to find the values of p and q. That means we're just simply going to solve these two equations simultaneously. Uh, the easiest way to do that is to double equation 2, or what I'm going to do, which is to half equation 1. So 2p becomes p, 4q becomes 2q, and 1 becomes 0.5. Call that equation 3. And I now have two equations with just p in. Uh, that's equation 2 and equation 3. So if I subtract those, equation 3 minus equation 2, p take away p, disappears. Uh, 2q take away q gives me q. And finally, 0 0.5 take away 0 0.4 gives me 0 0.1. So the value of Q just pops out. And if I substitute that into equation 3, I get P plus 
two lots of q, so two lots of 0 0.1 is 0 0.5, and I simply have to subtract that. So p is 0 0.5 minus 0 0.2, which is 0 0.3. Right, another concept related to that, the expected value uh, for x we've covered, this is now the expected value for x squared. So what would we predict the mean value of x squared would be? And the formula looks very similar, and you can see that we just take each value of x squared, and we multiply that by the corresponding probability. So a very simple, very similar formula. We just use x squared rather than using x. Um, so, let's have a look at this example. It's a discrete random variable with four values, one, two, three, or four, and we're given their probabilities there. If I want to work out the probabilities of getting certain values of x squared, uh, well, first of all, let's just work out what the values of x squared are. Hopefully that's not too taxing. Um, but the probabilities associated with that are the same as the probabilities associated with the x values that correspond. Okay, the probability that x squared is 1 is the same as the probability that x equals 1, and so on. So we can just copy the values straight across. So to find the expected value of x squared here, looking back at that formula, I need to do each value of x squared multiplied by its probability. So we have 1 multiplied by 12 over 25, and then from the table we've got 4 multiplied by 6 over 25, 9 times 4 over 25, and 16 times 3 over 25 and well that turns out to be 120 over 25 which we can write as a decimal exactly as 4.8 next we're looking at a really important concept for discrete random variables and that is the variance or var x um, you're familiar with variance from earlier in the course and you might remember one way that we had of memorizing the formula was to say that it is the mean of the squares minus the square of the mean well, in this case, we have the expected value of the squares minus the square of the expected value. So what does that look like? Well, the expected value of the squares, that's e of x squared. What mean value would we expect for x squared? Minus the square of the expected value. So that means the whole of e of x, the expected value, is squared. And again, once you memorize this, it's a fairly simple formula to use. So an example. We've got two ordinary dice, one is red and one is blue. And we've got a random variable m, which represents the score on the red die minus the score on the blue die. Okay, and we're asked to do a probability distribution for m. And to do that, we need to do a sample space first. Okay, and that's what this little table is for. So for each combination of red and blue values, we need to do uh, the score on the red one minus the score on the blue one. So 1 minus 1 is 0, 1 minus 2 is minus 1, and so on. 1 minus 3, 1 minus 4, 1 minus 5, 1 minus 6. Um, yeah, this could get a little bit tedious. 2 minus 1, 2 minus 2. Yeah, okay, let's speed it up. Um, you get the idea, um, and you can fill this in quite quickly following the patterns. Probably not as quickly as me. <laughs> anyway, um, that will inform my probability distribution. So if I start by considering the value of m minus 5, my sample space tells me quite clearly that there's only one way to get minus 5 out of my 36 possible outcomes. So that probability is 1 out of 36. Next, moving on to minus 4, I can see that there are two ways to get minus 4. So the probability there would be 2 out of 36. And so on, going through uh, 3 out of 36, 4 out of 36, 5 out of 36, 6 out of 36. Be careful here. You might be tempted to put 7 out of 36 and just hurry away through it, but careful. Look at the table. There are only five ways to get 1, four ways to get 2, and so on. So it actually starts to go back down again. And we'll see in a minute that it's useful to leave all the probabilities out of 36 rather than simplifying them. Now, for part B, we're asked to write down the value of the expected value of m, e of m. That's a clue. Whenever you see write down, it means you shouldn't have to do anything too taxing, and it's usually worth one mark. So how can we do that when we know we have to multiply all these probabilities by their values? Well, actually, we don't. Looking at the table, we can see that the expected value is 0, and we know that because the table is beautifully symmetrical. The probabilities are symmetrical. The values are evenly distributed either side of 0. So by symmetry, the expected value of m 
is 0. So uh, we next want to find the variance var of m and looking at the formula that we just derived we're going to use e of m the expected value which we just worked out is 0 but we're also going to need um, the expected value of m squared. So we're going to have to do each value of m squared multiplied by its probability. So we'll start with minus 5 squared, which is obviously 25, multiply that by 1 over 36. Next comes minus 4 squared, which is obviously 16, multiply that by 2 out of 36, and so on. Minus 3 squared times 3 out of 36, minus 2 squared times 4 out of 36, minus 1 squared, da 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 da, da. And we get to the middle, obviously 0 times anything is 0. You could carry on, um, but think about what we get, and again you're squaring the values, so the values of m squared will be the same as the ones that we've just had, and the probabilities are the same. So we're going to get the same as the first five terms occurring again by symmetry. So we don't need to write them out again, we don't need to work them all out and add them, we can just do two lots of the probabilities that we had at the start. So 2 times 105 over 36 is how it works out and that's why it was useful to keep 36 as the denominator. It makes it very easy to add them. Anyway that becomes 35 sixths and therefore I can work out the variance using my formula. So it's going to be e of x squared or rather m squared minus e of m squared. So the expected value of m squared we just worked out is 35 over 6. The expected value of m we did in part b and that's 0. So my variance is simply 35 over 6. That's part c done. That's this lesson done. Uh, time to go and practice. Any questions come and find me.